What's going on everybody? Welcome to Seth's Project. My name is Seth, of course. Today I'm really excited because we are starting on something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is put sliding doors into a cabinet. Um, I've done it over here on the first cabinet, the Japanese-inspired plane cabinet that I was working on, which maybe one day I'll get back to that one. But in this one, we're also going to have sliding doors and we're going to have Kumiko, and those are two of my favorite things. So this video should be exciting for me at least. Um, first things first, we will be making the Kumiko panel. And the reason we're making it first is because we will actually fit the maple frame around the Kumiko panel. It's a whole lot easier that way. Um, but the way I would normally do it is I would make the frame first and then get the distance in between and then try to make the frame fit and just kind of wing it because that's about all you can do. So if you build the frame or the Kumiko panel first and then size the frame around it and make your parts a little bit oversized, that way you can cut them all to their proper dimension afterwards, you will get much more accurate results. So that's what I'm gonna to try today. So we're gonna be starting out with some rough sawn basswood. I've used a bunch of this stuff and I absolutely love it. And I highly recommend you doing this uh, you, or using this wood for your Kumiko panel. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right guys, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the basswood down to 14 mil. And this is gonna determine the thickness of your Kumiko panel. Now, yours could be 10 mil, it could be eight mil. It's really up to you. But 14 mil is kind of what I think looks good personally. And uh, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of scrap and I'm also going to um, thickness it down to 14 mil. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use that for a little bit later on. All right guys, so I've got my basswood to exactly 14 mil and I've also got my scrap wood to 14 mil and I've cut it in half. So let me explain really quick what these pieces of scrap wood are gonna be used for. So I'm going to lower the blade on my table saw and I'm gonna remove this little jig here, which I'm gonna explain that in a second as well. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna take a pass off this one and my goal is to take exactly one half of the thickness off of here so that way whenever I put these together, just like a half lap joint, um, they'll be flush. So let me demonstrate that so maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. Alrighty guys, so this is the result of that session. So when I put these two together, um, you can see that it's a little bit high here, which means I don't have the blade high enough. And if, and if you have the blade too high, then you will see a gap um, down through there. And I would much rather the blade be too low than too high. So we're just gonna slowly raise this up and slowly keep taking a little bit off until we have it 100% flush on top. All right guys, so I have that 100% flush now. So what that means is whenever I go to cut these pieces, that they will be 100% perfect and they will go together 100% um, flush on the top. And that's really what we're looking for here. So uh, yeah, let's get started cutting the basswood now. All right, before we get started here, um, let me explain this little jig that I'm gonna be using today. It's kind of like a finger joint jig, but um, all it is is it's a little piece that sits right down here on my crosscut sled and it's got a little piece um, that is half the width of the Kumiko, which would be seven mil. So all I'll do is I'll set my table saw blade just like it is now and I will run a kerf just like this. And that will give me a little notch out there and then I'll put a piece of scrap wood in there just like that. So that way whenever I go to cut my first, um, well my registration, uh, cut, I guess you could say, um, that next one will register inside of that key and I can get 100% accurate and repeatable cuts um, from then on out. So um, that's the most accurate way that I've found to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. You wanna make sure you are looking at your plans and uh, you know how wide your Kumiko spacing is. Mine happens to be 38.5 mil and that will give me the correct size in the end. So all I'm gonna do is put my um, roll down here and we're gonna get 38 and a half mil. 
I want to be dead accurate on this so I'm going to spend a little bit of time here really kind of knocking it back and forth getting it right at 38 and a half mil one two three we are spot on right now and I am happy with that that was a little bit faster than I thought so all I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this down right here and we're going to start making our cuts I have cut um, my pieces to rough length so I know the width of my Kumiko panel is going to be about um, 170 mil so in, in the end the panel will be 170 mil in width so I gave myself some uh, some room to have the little pieces off the ends so that way I can trim it flush in the end and I trimmed these to 190 mil so I'm gonna probably come over about this far make my first cut and then that cut will register in the key and then I'll make the rest of the cuts from then on out so yeah I should end up with six cuts across here and um, hopefully this will be these two pieces will be enough to make four different panels if not I have plenty more So next part is uh, the part that I think is the hardest. So all I've done is I've changed out my blade for the thinnest kerf. That way I can get as many pieces as I can possibly get out of um, these two. And I have set my fence to be the distance of one piece of Kumiko roughly. Um, this, the reason this is so hard is because you've got to get these pieces exact to width. And in my case, let me get my calipers, wherever they are, right here. Um, in my case, I need these to be about 3.3 mil exactly. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this down here and I'll use a scrap piece and I will cut um, a little notch out just like this. So that way, if I had a push stick, I would highly recommend making one of these. It'll make this way, way, way less dangerous because you know with that little kickback, yeah, you get the point. So. Um, yeah, all we're going to do is make some test cuts and we're going to use the digital calipers or we are going to try to test fit these into the grooves and if they're too snug, you'll know and if they're too loose, you'll know. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one of those and we're going to see how it fits. Alrighty, so this is what the piece looks like. It actually came out a little too thin. I think we are right at 3.2 mil. We need to be at 3.3 mil. So all I'm gonna do is loosen up my fence and I'm just gonna knock it over just a very, very slight amount. So that's as far as I'm moving it. You guys probably couldn't even see that. But now we're gonna take another cut and we're just gonna keep doing this until we get a perfect fit. So a little taps back and forth, and this is the kind of fit that I've got. That's absolutely perfect. As you can see, it goes down nice and flush. You really can't even see where they meet. So I'm insanely happy with that. And uh, I'm gonna continue on cutting these pieces, and we're just gonna go ahead and really get started into this video.
I'm not gonna record the full process here. Mainly because I already have a tutorial on the Asanoha pattern or the infill pieces and I will put a link in the description to the video that I'm referring to and if I don't make sure to yell at me in the comment section and I will certainly put that in the description. So as you can see here there is a bunch of pieces that go into this. I think if my math is right there is 227 total pieces that go into the four panels that are going to go into the doors. So this is a whole bunch of work um, and uh, I'm excited to get it done. So now that we have all of the door parts uh, to their final dimension, it is now time to start cutting the joinery and I've kind of tossed around a couple things, kind of wondered how I was going to cut the joinery, I didn't know if I was going to do it by hand or with power tools, but I think the fastest and most accurate way for me to do this is I'm going to cut the tenons on the table saw, which I will show you guys all of that process. And I'm also going to cut the mortises on the mortising machine, of course, I think it's the most accurate because these are kind of small tenons and any sort of variance inside of the mortise hole will really throw things off and I kind of want to just avoid that and um, I want to get these doors done and out and um, so we can go ahead and start on the legs and I want to get this project done. This is taking me way longer than I was hoping. But uh, anyway, we're going to jump back into it. So real quick, I'm going to explain how I'm going to fit these Kimiko panels and yes, I still don't have them done. Um, but um, this is how we're going to do it. So I'm going to make the tenon here first and um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Kumiko panel up against the corner here and then I'm going to hold it tight. I'm going to scribe me a line here and then I'm going to come over here, make sure it's tied up against the corner and scribe me a line on the style. And what that'll do is give me my locations for my mortises. So this mortise will go here and that'll give me a perfect perfect fit on the Kumiko panel there and then this will give me a perfect fit on the middle style here. So it'll kind of look like this and it'll be super tight fit and I'll be 
super happy with it. So that is the plan. I hope it works. I've never done this before. So um, yep, we're gonna give it a shot though. So all I've done is I've taken the Kumiko panel right here and I have assembled the frame, the left side of the frame, and I, I slid the panel up in the corner and I, I scribed me a line here and I scribed me a line on the top rail. And that gave me these lines and all I'm gonna do is transfer these lines over to all the other parts on the first and second door. So that way I don't have to do it again and it uh, gives me a perfect layout every time. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now and then we're gonna go over and cut the mortises. Then we're gonna finish off cutting the haunch on the tenon and then we'll assemble everything. Then we will cut the grooves on the top and bottom rails, get everything fit in the doors, put a finish on it and then we'll be done. So I'm really excited for that. So there's something I kind of wanted to point out really quick. Um, so you guys saw that I cut these tenons on the table saw and um, I always cut close to my baseline. So as you can see, my baseline is right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you guys can kind of see the baseline right here. I didn't go all the way down. And the reason for it is because it'll never be accurate with a stop. So I always get close and I always get my chisel and I will chisel down to that baseline. That is the most accurate way to do that. Um, even though I use power tools, I still use hand tools in the end because in my opinion, there's nothing more accurate than a scribe line and a chisel. So um, yeah, that's how I got these pretty accurate.
So now that we have all the tenons done on the doors, it should look like this one right here. Um, next thing we're gonna do is cut the grooves for the panel here. Um, I did this one off camera just to kind of see how I was gonna do it. I wasn't exactly sure. And uh, yeah, so I figured out how I, wanted, how I wanted it to look and how I kind of wanted it to fit together. So I'm gonna do this again on camera so that way you guys can see how I did it obviously and uh, I can do it a little bit more smoothly this time. So uh, then all we gotta do is we gotta cut the little notches off of the Kumiko panels and we'll do that on camera as well. And then we're gonna glue it together and then we're gonna be done. I can't believe I'm finally saying that, but yeah, we're gonna be done with this. This slide's absolutely incredible and uh, I cannot wait for you guys to see this complete and I can't wait to see it complete. All right guys, I'm just planning everything up here. It is about time for finish. And then we're gonna fit the Kumiko in the doors. So I'm just gonna plane this up just a little bit, get all the ends flush. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put some glue in the corners before I pound these uh, panels the rest of the way in. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me here. This is it, this is the last steps before these doors are done. So yeah, I'm just putting glue in the corners so that I know this panel will stay in place. I, I have no doubt in my mind that it'll stay in place without the glue but I don't want them to be taken out I kind of want them to be permanent so there we go now I'm just gonna push it down there we go perfect there we go so right there's what it looks like Alrighty everybody, it is finally time to put these in the case and let's see what they look like. The first one's kind of hard to put in, the 
that's just because it has to go all the way into the back groove. There's that one. The first one's a little bit easier. But there we go, guys. There it is. They slide absolutely beautifully. No complaints. Perfect. All right guys, I believe that's it for the video. Um, I hope you learned something, I know I did. Um, I really, 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 really loved how these doors came out and I really hope you do too. Um, next episode, of course, this project is not done yet. We've gotta put the legs on here. I'm gonna be making them in my walnut. I hope I have enough walnut. Um, if I don't, of course, I can always get some more. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe, do not miss the last episode of this and um yeah we'll see you guys next time